Zombies! <laughs> They're actually real. Some organisms can become a mindless zombie if they are involved in a certain type of relationship. There are three major types of the relationship between organisms. The first one is a true love, a win-win situation, when both partners clearly benefit from their relationship. Like this bee and the flower. The bee needs nectar in order to produce honey. And by flying from one flower to another, it transmits pollen to help the flower to reproduce. So both partners benefit. Win-win situation, true love. And it's called mutualism. There is also one-sided love. When one partner benefits, and another one has no real opinion. It's like a whale and the small organisms that are called barnacles over there, that live on the surface of the whale, and so they get a place to live, and as the whale swims, they filter water and get some food. They clearly benefit from this relationship. The whale doesn't care. That's called commensalism. And then there is another type of the relationship, which is not a love at all. Um, it's when one partner constantly takes advantage of this relationship, hurts the other one all the time. And you all have been there with this. It's this guy who was copied from you in school every day. <laughs> Never even said thank you. It hurts, huh? But okay, it's a joke. Kids are not parasites. <laughs> or are they? I think it's a topic for another lecture. <laughs> so, parasites can live either inside their hosts or also outside. And so they use the energy and the resources of the host to eat and to reproduce. And if you think about the host, so the primary host, the main host for each parasite, it's like a house. The place where you can eat as much as you want and also reproduce as much as you want. <laughs> but usually, so you would always want to come back home because you like it. But life of a parasite, most of the cases, starts outside of home. And from the moment the baby parasite is born, it's on a journey, an amazing journey full of adventures, challenges. It will grow, it will find some other hosts, which will be intermediate hosts, sort of like a you know, temporary apartment or friend, or a vehicle that it will use to drive themselves forward in their life cycle. They will even transform, grow, evolve into some other um, morphological forms. And finally, the mature parasite will finally come back home and of course reproduce. And then the cycle will start again. So certain parasites develop the unique ability to facilitate this process and to manipulate the behavior of intermediate hosts in order to ensure that their life cycle gets completed. And the life cycle of every parasite is an amazing, it's a thriller, it's a drama full of emotions. It's an amazing story. And I'm happy to share some of these stories with you tonight. Look at this snail, for example. Is it going to disco party? <laughs> we don't know. But what we do know is that it was unfortunate to eat some eggs of a parasitic worm that grew inside this snail and then invaded its eyes. And there it crusades back and forth, pretending to be a delicious caterpillar. It also changes the behavior of the snail. The snail starts crawling up on a leaf or a piece of a grass because it really want to be, wants to be on a spot. It wants to get noticed by a hungry, maybe angry bird. The bird would think, ah, oh, delicious caterpillar. It would eat it and the worm will get back home to its primary host, a bird. Then it will multiply and then with the bird's droppings, the eggs of the worm will get out and then another unfortunate snail will eat it and the cycle is complete. Some parasites don't even need to be inside their host in order to manipulate their behavior. And to tell you this story, I have to ask you a question. Who of you likes cockroaches? <laughs> what? A couple of people there, all right? But almost nobody. But why? This guy is so lonely. He, he really needs a friend, you know? Because he's got a very powerful enemy. 
I never had a cockroach poster. This guy is a real monster. He hates cockroaches. When he sees a cockroach, it attacks it. And during the fight, it stings it twice. The first time it stings it, it paralyzes the roach temporarily. So the roach cannot fight back or run away. And while it is paralyzed, it stings it for the second time precisely into the brain. And there it injects a very special venom which doesn't kill the roach, neither it seduces it. Instead, it just makes the roach a very obedient slave. It can run away or fight if it wants to. It just doesn't want to. All at once, it just stands still and waits for the orders from its master, the master boss. <laughs> and the boss then grabs the roach by its antenna and just walks it home like a dog on a leash. And the road just whatever I'm following, you know. <laughs> because the wasp had previously digged the hole and it's guiding the road directly into its hole, its hole. So it will lay an egg on the surface of the road and then barricade the entrance, basically burying the road alive. And then the egg will hatch and the small larvae will suck the nutrients out of the roach and then crawl inside and eat the zombie roach which is still alive inside out. I didn't put any video, I thought you would like that. <laughs> and after that, the fully grown up wasp emerges out of the body of the zombie roach. Don't you feel sorry for the guy now? Come on, give him a call, Jesus. <laughs> but these are all worms, insects, I mean, who cares really? What about bigger animals? There is another story uh, about the bigger animals. But before I tell this, I actually need to make a little announcement. Um, the thing is, uh, I've been in a sort of a relationship for a while, uh, and uh, I thought since I'm here on this stage today, it's a good opportunity for me to confess my feelings <laughs> and uh, publicly yeah, say that I'm in love and uh, actually it's a bit stressful, so I would appreciate a little bit of your support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm um, mainly and, and deeply in love, in love with my pet, Maurice! He's cute, huh? <laughs> Our love was perfect. Until Boris and someone else. Someone else was also in love with Michael Boris. And he tried to take him away. It all started when Boris got slightly sick. He had a parasitic infection. I actually think that the Boris is a parasite himself because he only eats, sleeps and plays around. But at the time it was serious. He got infected with a real monster. Taxoplasma going to eat. <laughs> a single cell with a zone parasite that wanted to live and multiply inside the guts of Mike and Boris. This parasite has a very, very complicated life cycle. But what's important here is that it can only sexually reproduce inside the guts of different feline species. A romantic place, right? <laughs> so Boris wasn't really happy about it. So he decided to get rid of the parasite. So he went to the bathroom. <laughs> and from there, parasite escaped and quickly spread all around the nature. It contaminated grass, water, gum with the wind was everywhere. But as it can only sexually reproduce inside the intestines of different cat species, it really wanted to come back to my cat Boris. <laughs> so it waited for the Boris's mortal enemy to appear, Mr. Mouse. Once it got inside the mouse, it needed to convince him to go find Boris. And for that, it developed a very, very evil plan. It migrated into the brain of Mr. Mouse and forced neurons to produce dopamine, the molecule which is responsible for feelings of joy, excitement, and reward. So Mr. Mouse became very happy <laughs> and romantic. But still, he didn't want to go find Boris because mice have innate fear of predators. 
if they smell a cat's urine, they panic and they run away. And I understand this, it's okay. <laughs> but parasites accumulated in a special region of the brain which is called amygdala. This region controls fear and anxiety, so it accumulated there and totally messed it up. Instead of being afraid, Mr. Mouse became wary, wary. <laughs> all he wanted, all he wanted, is to run into Boris and make sweet, sweet love, <laughs> just like that. <clears throat> He just opened his mouth and let Mr. Mouse run there. <laughs> Love became deadly. And that's another example of how certain parasites can control behavior of their intermediate hosts in order to ensure that their life cycle gets completed. But what if parasite doesn't get inside a mouse? What if it gets inside else? People. Well, in fact, one third of the world's population and all of you included, not all, one third. <laughs> it's positive for the exoplasm. I don't want to say that you ate the cat's poo once, okay? <laughs> and even if you did, it's fine, it's a free country, right? <laughs> but probably you got it with undercooked meat or unpasteurized milk or while working in your garden, as the parasite contaminates soil easily. Our immune system is able to protect us. But who is in real danger? These are the pregnant women, because if you get infected with the parasite for the first time in your life during pregnancy, that can be a very serious danger for your baby, so there are no jokes here. Please, if you're pregnant and you have a cat, go to the doctor, do some tests, and please avoid changing the cat's litter. Just stay away from this as far as you can. Guys, we have to deal with this shit. <laughs> but some parasites may remain in our brain, at the end of the day, I mean, our brain is not very different from the mouse brain. I know it sounds upsetting, but uh, it actually gives hope to so many people who think about it. <laughs> Does it affect our behavior? There is some scientific evidence showing that if you post the plasma, you're more likely to be involved in car accidents, and also there is a uh, correlation between being positive for plasma and exhibiting aggressive and reckless behavior, and also connection uh, with development of mental illness. And now you're probably thinking, okay, cats, mental illness? Now it explains all the crazy cat ladies, right? <laughs> Don't jump into confusions that fast. Still, it's not fully understood. But even if parasites make us love cats, how can we resist? <laughs> and for me, it is totally fine. But I ask you to remember one thing. Boris is mine! <laughs>